I didn't study with a teacher. I studied on my own with different people. I grew up in a in a uh, area where there were a lot of musicians, and they shared with you. They, you know, people like Donald Byrd was in the neighborhood at the time, and Arthur Sterling and and, and Jimmy Carr, I think, lived for a while, and all kinds of people. And there was always jam sessions, and so everyone came and shared what they knew. So I didn't really feel the need to study until uh, I called Charlie Persip. Either someone told me he was teaching, or I saw uh, an ad he might have had out that he was accepting some students. And so I had, I had known him from his career with Dizzy and big band playing and his own small group. Uh, and so I got in touch with him. And uh, we sat down, we did some things, and he took me on as a student. How old were you at the time? I must have been 18-ish. Uh, and uh, for about two years, I studied with him for two years. And then was studying on my own, being influenced by the master drummers of the day until, I mean, my first real professional gig was with Paul Blay. When I met Paul Blay, I was a janitor in a recording studio, and he came in to record, and we got to talking. And I don't know, so a few weeks later, he called me for a gig at Slugs which was the first Jerry Schultz, Jerry the owner. Uh, Dave Eisenstein lived next house or something to where Slugs was situated and talked Jerry into trying music. So we played a Sunday afternoon. We were actually the ones that opened Slugs. We did a one night, one afternoon gig, Dave Eisenstein, Paul Blay, and he called me, man, out of the blue. He never heard me play. He just... We just talked. And so, yeah, I threw my drums in a taxi, and I went down to, to, to Slugs. Matter of fact, it cost me more getting there and back home than we got for the gig. But it didn't matter. But No, no, it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, it started a very long and, and musical relationship with Paul Blake. 